tonight what we you were talking about how to analyze potential of technology and looking at at the process that a certain machine or mechanism is going through and then seeing how much waste is produced with with noise or with heat like for light bulbs that was that and another version is also to see at to look at interfaces which is very interesting when you have a look at your smartphone they came up with smartphones getting smaller and smaller because you didn't want to carry so much and they made the display more and more efficient and then some color came in the keyboard got smaller as well but then with a smartphone what came up is that they included the input from the from the keys into the screen itself so screen and input medium was the same that means that the interface is one basically the whole surface is one interface where you get information out and you can also put information in and if you see at the transition since then then you have an increase in display which means the phone was getting smaller because the interface was still the same people I guess were not having that much problem with with the typing and with the reading on the screen as they had with the weight of the phone that they had to carry around but once there was a transition into having the interface uh, and the input on one medium basically open up the possibilities and the data connection to input it on the screen and to get information out so you had like videos of course and websites you now they have all the stuff coming out and that then led to the interface which is yeah the, the touch screen getting bigger and bigger and then you have like tablets and probably also some televisions now that ha that have a screen and or at least we have a remote where where you don't really tap but yeah if we look at, at that interface problem to bridge it to another to the another area is yeah, I think what I want to get is if you want to connect two technologies, input and output or haptic with the fingers and seeing with the eyes, then you have to look at it from from a interface perspective. Um, I studied biomedical engineering and there's a nice interesting topic because you try to solve medical problems with technology. Um, instead of using pharmaceutical means or surgery, you try to use technology to make it better. So that goes from band-aids to um, block off the environment from getting to your wounds. So dirt and uh, moisture getting into the wound um, to needles so that you can interface through the skin to in inject healthy substances hopefully or for example artificial joints and legs to connect uh, or to replace lost functions of your motor system and there it is very important how you interface in between in the body as far as i can see there are two important and difficult interfaces that have to be solved so that you can have more interaction between the technology side and the medical side and that is for one is the interface of the skin right now it is not really possible to have a good um, transdermal implant so something technology that goes through the skin when you have something like this like a needle or for some implants that so they have they go through the skin or even if you have just cosmetic implants like like rings or something you have always a source for infection because you have no clear interface which means a clear um, overpath 
from the technology from the metal or the surface to the skin there will always be like a boundary and no good connection that prevents particles from getting through or moisture that removes movement in between you can imagine if they rub with each other you have inflammation and production of particles and abrasion and there's a lot of potential if someone would come up with with a means of creating a surface so so that the skin can connect to something that then has on the other side the metal or plastic or some other material where, which can then house some technology things and um, there was a study or they came up with something like a titanium surface or because i mean like titanium just because it's um bioneutral it's it doesn't have any body reaction so if you have some materials in your body obviously the body recognizes that it's a foreign body and then it tries to to block it off to fight it so you have a lot of immune system cells coming to it attaching to it and trying to block it off and maybe transport it out and i mean like and then when you have so much coming there that is basically just another description of inflammation but if you have a biocompatible material then it's neutral and the body is is not really recognizing it as some kind of hazard it maybe see it is like as some kind of maybe substrate as a nice place to to dock on and have a <laughs> have a chill place to rest but it's not recognized as some kind of hazardous or a danger so and substance like this is maybe you have like gold titanium or some plastics maybe um, you have silicon and what else was like titanium some alloys which you can use and they have to, of course be careful if you do something like this it has to be like completely disinfected that you yeah prevent anything from getting into your body that you don't want to have there so i was yeah drifting a little bit away i was talking about this what they came up with they had basically a surface which was very porous and that allowed the skin to grow into it and then you wouldn't have a gap between them or like you have, would have a closed interface in between and that would prevent parts from getting in particles from getting in and you would have like a a clean boundary between inside and outside but yeah i don't know really um how well it actually works because the skin works that you have diff uh, a lot of cells on the bottom that grow like on the on the inside of the body or the, or the bottom of your skin they grow then they slowly die and as, as more cells grow under it and push it to the outside and on the outside they die then they dry up and then you have uh, abrasion on the outside where it's then basically you have scales that then when they dry off they get just rubbed off and fall fall off so and you also have to have to that on that surface so now it could be that the skin cells grow towards the material and there they can't really escape so they grow 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 um, i could imagine that you then get like callosis building there which would maybe still be okay maybe there's something that it can still work out but yeah if it would be easy someone would probably already came up with a solution um, if you have an idea there's definitely some money to make because once you have that you can uh, use take more and more technology to solve problems in the body to replace uh, if, if someone has like 
um, loses a lot of skin, it can be replaced with other materials that have similar functions or if you have someone that needs to inject uh, his diabetes medication then you can just add a port somewhere on the body where you don't have to sting yourself with a needle any all the time but you have a special port where you can connect um, other means would be for people that have cochlear implants um, so if you have this kidney getting a signal out of your brain or yeah there are, there are many ones so you can access functions in the body and augment them with technology from the outside so that was the one thing and the other one is when you have um, the interface of the nerves this is very interesting for people that have lost their limbs and then they get an artificial limbs and right now they are doing this the the most sophisticated version would be to um, have the nerves rerouted to another part of the muscle so when the limbs for your you lose your arm and they use the nerves that would go to your hand they reroute this to the muscle that is basically working as some kind of ampli as basically an amplifier so if you think about moving your hand you're actually using the muscles in in a cut off or like a separated part of your chest muscle and you can pick up this signal with electrodes like the electrodes are on the skin and they just basically measuring a change in electric field and then they can you can use the mission the artificial arm so if you could use their technology where you go directly from the nerve into some kind of recording device, an electrical one, um, then you could bypass all this difficult surgery where you put the nerve somewhere else and get directly to the artificial joint or other technology that you can control then. Yeah, that's basically it. Thinking a little bit about interfaces, cutting corners, getting getting shortcuts, making a smaller, uh, getting a shorter path from A to B in the information flow and improved technology. Yeah, that's it so far.